Hey everybody and welcome back to Ginger Flicks. I'm Joey. And I'm Josh. And what movie are we doing today, Josh? <laughs> what? We're doing the soon to be classic Eurovision. The saga of fire saga or something along the story, those lines. The story of fire. The story of fire saga. I feel like the saga of fire saga. There, would that'd be, be too many sagas in a five. <laughs> but it would be perfect. Five word sentence. It would be perfect. Don't, don't deny it. Unless it was like the saga of fire saga saga. <laughs> 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 Playing just Sega. Keep, just keep adding saga. Like just <laughs> in Mississauga, in Mississauga, and then the the final tagline would be cruise control, <laughs> like Titanic three, cruise control, yes. <laughs> All right, okay, so uh, let's jump in. What did you think of this one? Uh, you know what? I liked it. I thought it was a cute movie. Um, <laughs> it was pretty silly. I loved it. It was silly. Like, there are things... Oh, yeah. There are things that I feel, like, with Will Ferrell, and we'll probably get into it more as we talk about this movie, mm -hmm. but, like, there are certain things that I feel like... It's so good to being... Or it's so close to being a really good movie because you, you watch it and you feel good. Like, that's the thing. Like, I felt... Oh, yeah. I felt oh, totally. It's, it. it's like, a lot of fun, and it's a lot of just... It's fairly lighthearted, so that's... I thought it was a really cute movie. Like, there's things about yeah. it that was cute. But there's certain tropes of Will Ferrell's, like <laughs> some of the disaster <laughs> stuff that happens in it, that, oh, I, like, <laughs> that I'm just like, that's... I, for me, it was going too far overboard. That, like, it, it, it borders... Like, it's already a silly movie, so you kind of have to go in thinking that. But there's, like, moments where... Uh, there's moments where I feel like it just goes too far, so it kind of takes me out of it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but, I could see that. Yeah, like, but, um, well, know, like the scene when they're in the actual competition and her yeah. scarf gets caught on the giant hamster wheel. Yeah, like, I was like, come on. It, it was like, okay, it was funny. I laughed. I but thought it was funny, and you knew disaster was happening right from the, the whole second. Thing. The second she says, Did you a long scarf? Exactly. <laughs> Did you change my like, scarf? It's like, yeah. you knew something was coming. <laughs> I was like, okay. But it was like, how, like, where was the, how come there's no logic? That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. You know? That, that's yeah, they, the the, but they, they, that, he had, like, the character himself had, like, zero logic. He's and just like. Like, especially if it's a guy, for example, they, yeah. they kept driving it home that he just wants to win. He wants mm -hmm, to win. Mm -hmm. But it's like if if you're that kind of person, and obviously he's supposed to be in his like 40s or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. You spent your whole life. This is all you want to do. You're not gonna mess it up. Like you're not, you know. No, exactly. It's like you, you he they really pushed on how ridiculous he is as a character. And yeah, again, I mean, we are picking apart certain flaws of the movie, but they're also like typical Will Ferrell tropes. That's what I mean. It's like if they took exactly that, some of that out, like and just made it that they had maybe a bad performance, like um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe uh, I don't know if they had like if they if they didn't harmonize well, or or maybe there was an actual like technical malfunction, like someone else sabotaged it or something. Mm -hmm. I buy that. I'd be like, okay, and like, like the Russian guy or something sabotaged yeah, like, it or whatever. Like, what if he sabotaged it, like that one performance with the hamster wheel, and yeah, because the only reason they made it through was because they people kind of felt sorry for them, right? And that's why they made it through because they they were kind of guess. Yeah, it, it, they didn't really, they didn't do a good job of explaining that either as to why they made so it through. It would have been even better if someone actually sabotaged them. So that way it's like, if it backfired on them instead of like, and then, and then it could still lead to Will Ferrell walking away being like, look, something always happens. I like, I can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just sort of change it from being Will Ferrell's fault to, you know somebody actually attempting something like that 
you know, guy who didn't don't want think them. It's his fault because he's yeah. like, I, you know, it's because of me. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could have done it anyway. Like, you know, with the, the guy who didn't want them to go to Eurovision in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he could have <laughs> actually sabotaged them. <laughs> and it and turns was- out he blew up the boat of every single possible <laughs> performer. Like, it's so funny because, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, but but so. So but, ridiculous. But so that's it. Like, like I said, there were ridiculous parts. But at the end of the day, like, I watched the whole uh-huh, movie. Uh-huh. And honestly, what was so sad was I could, I, I watched this, like, late at night, borderline morning. Because I just couldn't fall asleep. <laughs> it was whenever we were supposed to watch, or the day it came out, I think it was the Friday. It was the Friday, yeah. I, I was, watched it, like, right after work on Friday. <laughs> honestly, I watched it the morning. Like, it, it had to be, like, yeah. two, two or three in the morning. I couldn't sleep, so I put it on. <laughs> so and, and I so you basically forward. were, like, one of the first views of this. Probably. And so, <laughs> at the end of the day, like, you know, is it a great movie? No. But I really, en- I enjoyed it, and I felt good. It was it, fun. Like I, it was yeah. a lot of fun. I mean, like the the musical numbers alone were were kind of ridiculous yes. and over the top. Well, not even just over the top. Like I really enjoyed. Like what? So I feel like here's the thing. I feel like, and sometimes Will Ferrell doesn't get credit for this because well, it depends on the movie. But I feel like he mm-hmm. actually put a lot of work into this movie. Oh yeah, I, totally. I feel like there was a lot of research done um, in terms of. You know, finding out that Abel won and was like 1974 or whatever. Or like the Eurovision tournament in general, right? Yeah, we have, I've never heard of it. And then, but he knows it because of his wife, who is Swedish. I think, oh. I think she's Swedish and he started watching okay. it in 99. And so he had this idea for a while. Yeah. And then, so it was in 2018, <laughs> he actually, like, apparently he went to one in like 2014. Like, he okay. Went to the finals, but he actually followed the whole thing in 2018. Like, he got to see the rehearsal process, he got to be at every event. So, this idea has been like bouncing around the back of his head for a while, you would yeah, say. So right. I feel like you could sense that when watching it. And the production value was really good. Oh my opinion. goodness! Like the like from everything, like the fact that you know, I think they did shoot in Iceland or whatever, and there oh. they are. Like, like was it the the opening with her <laughs> singing on the mountain, or whatever. Like the first like to his yeah. to his fantasy of them like singing on the mountain yeah. with like this epic music video. I'm like, yeah. I, I I'm sitting there. I'm like, what did I get myself into in watching this? This is amazing. First of yeah. all, it's but it's so shamelessly silly, and I love that. Mm-hmm. It's it's it, I feel like the last few movies we've done have um, not been you know uh, knowingly silly. They mm-hmm. just happen to turn out silly, except for like maybe one or two in the middle between. <laughs> yeah. But well, like, what was the last one we did? Artemis Fowl. And, <laughs> and, that was and that was just silly because it was bad. <laughs> but that's what I mean, right? Like this one is like this knows what it's it what it is, and it is going for it, right? And I love that about that about this movie. Yeah, I would say too. One thing I really liked, not the one thing I liked about it, but mm-hmm. it, I mean, because there was more than one thing, but I I really liked uh rachel mcadams you know what i mean she's she was great bad. yeah she's ever bad she might not true be she's bad. not really she's not really bad at all i i find but like even in movies like doctor strange where she's just like the love interest and doesn't have much to do she's like even bad. barely the love interest in that like she 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 puts out a pretty stellar performance for such a small part in that yeah. specific movie yeah, exactly. this one's obviously a lot bigger of a role and she she nails it i mean she's the accents killed me too i was like Really, we're doing this? Like, <laughs> I feel like they know. went in and out of the accents on purpose too. They did, and there was, there was the one moment. There was the one moment too, and it reminded me she had almost the same reaction in in Game Night. Did you ever watch Game Night? 
I have. It's been a while since I've seen it, it. It's 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 in game night when the guy gets thrown into the propellers, and she's like, yeah, ah, and she's like, oh no, he died. She had a yeah. reaction. <laughs> I think it was when the boat blew up too. She was like, oh yes, no, oh yeah, that whole. But yay! Oh, but all the people. But yes. Yeah, like it was the same thing, and it, it was still it was still enjoyable to me because. Like she, she, she puts everything into it. <laughs> she embraces how silly of a scenario it actually is. So I mean that you know, gotta love the Canadian girl, man. She's like, she, you know, hey, she. she this episode, this episode will be dropping on Canada Day. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's right. This, hence my getup. Oh snap. I was, you know what? And Where also, my hat? My and your Jay's hat. hat. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, hey, there you go. Right? And on top of that, we watched a movie with a good old Canadian girl, right from where we're from, actually. Yeah. Is she, she from went, Toronto? Where's she she from went like... to York University. Right, she did. Yeah, she went to York. So, yeah, she, she spent some time in, in, in our neck of the woods. Well, you know, she was at, when I was at Randolph, she was there rehearsing. Like when I was Oh, really? There. So you have, so there's a six degrees of separation yeah. with her. So there you go. Here's, here's like a <laughs> little kind of funny, but annoying story. I remember I was, this was still early when I was at Randolph. I was in second right. term. And, and Randolph is, for the audience that might not uh, know. For those of you who know, Randolph is a college in Toronto now. It used to just be an academy, but now it's actually uh, a college. It's been sanctioned for, a college? Yeah, but it's for the performing arts. So you, uh, it, you do acting, singing, and dancing there. It's um, a triple threat, if, if you were, um, school. And yeah, so I mean, I went there many years ago, mm -hmm. back before mm -hmm. the wheel, and it was good times. <laughs> they just came out with the wheel when you got there. <laughs> um, but what was they just say? brought it out. It was amazing. So my one of my teachers, her name was Rosanna. She actually was also the director of the play I was in and everything. She right. was. Um, they were doing the vagina monologues at that time. And, I love those vagina models. Right, and Rachel McAdams was one of the uh, the actors, one of the performers. One of the performers, along with Sarah Pauly as well. Oh wow! Who, and I, I there's, can't, there's another there's another good old Canadian name exactly. And so <laughs> Rosanna, my teacher, was also uh, her coach, uh, uh, Rachel McAdams. So she was rehearsing. I remember we were in one class, scene study or something like that, and Rosanna mm -hmm. was rehearsing with her upstairs. And um, people in my class kept making excuses to leave early, and it was literally just to go... Take a peek her. at Rachel McAdams. Take a peek at her. And, and watch, watch her work, basically. And there was maybe half of us still left in the class, including myself, and we're looking around going, no one has to leave early. And they literally were doing the whole starstruck like peaking and whole you know, so so okay it, it, it was a matter back. so but was it a matter after that so was it a matter of being starstruck or actually like wanting to pick her brain did they get that opportunity or were they just being no. you know well, because she was in a, cl a classroom with rosanna rehearsing no one was okay, so she was working her. she was working so, so they were just trying to walk they were trying to just walk by and look through the window Mm -hmm. That is childish. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I remember I was maybe 21 at the time. And I yeah, that was a while like, back. I was like, guys, you got to, like, come on. We're here to work. Get Are your you act together. Work? She's be doing she, exactly what she's doing. I mean, she's here to do what we're doing. <laughs> exactly. And it was literally that. And <laughs> oh unfortunately, I never actually got to see the performance. But oh, that sucks. Apparently, both her and Sarah Pauly at the time were amazing. And was um sorry that we're way off topic anyways but was sarah Pauly like also rehearsing with rosanna or is it no. just no. rachel mcadams no but i think it was i think not only was rosanna the coach but i think she was the director of the show oh it was one of her like actual shows and I stuff i think so don't call me but i if i remember correctly yeah she was actually the director you should try and get in contact with her and ask her if she was the director or not. Yeah, 
I can see yeah. that. We're not, we're not asking you to talk to Rachel McAdams. We're just asking you to talk to Rosanna, someone you already know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But yeah. Anyway. Uh, Oh, but anyways, so off, off on that wonderful Rachel McAdams, Josh connection tangent that we just had. Um, like this, I love the fact, like I said, I love the fa- fact they just would keep going in and out of the accent. And I think it was done on purpose. But my favorite thing was her belief in elves. And he didn't believe in elves? <laughs> he was like... Elves? No, that's silly. Why? No, there are no elves. <laughs> never, I know, like, clearly that's like a wah, wah, even though it's like one of your best roles. Come on. <laughs> There's no such thing as elves or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> but the, best, the best payoff is when he finally believes. <laughs> I know. Because the Iceland, like, I guess government official or, like, head of the arts or something involving the funding. Because he was, like, the secretary of, like, treasury or something ridiculous, something, like, mm-hmm. along those lines. He was, like, actively trying to prevent Iceland from winning this competition because mm-hmm. they couldn't afford to, you know, host the next year's competition because... I guess the whole deal with Eurovision is the winner, the person from the winning country, the country hosts the next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so they'd go bankrupt. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to afford to have everybody in the tiny island of Iceland. So this guy takes all of Iceland's most talented people, puts them on a boat, <laughs> and then blows up the boat. <laughs> As, as as terrible as I sound laughing at this out of context, <laughs> but the payoff is he comes to his demise by unseen elves. Yeah, knife in the back. <laughs> With the tiniest, <laughs> the, t- the tiniest little knife. It was like, it was no bigger than my index finger. <laughs> and it's in his yeah. back. And they yeah, killed him. Done. Like I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> and everybody's like, hey, where's he go? Where he hasn't answered his phone in a few days. Eh, he's probably busy. <laughs> like they didn't really. They didn't even care. <laughs> no. Nobody that. cared. <laughs> and the fact that you had because Demi Lovato makes an appearance in this movie. Yeah, I didn't realize it was her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had no idea. I was like, I, I kept thinking because she was what, Katiana or whatever it was? She's Katiana. So Katiana is like the best singer out of Iceland yeah. and, you know, the f- odds on favorite to win. Yeah. So she ends up on this boat. So throughout the movie, afterwards, after the boat has exploded, she returns as like a half charred, one armed <laughs> ghost that haunts Will Ferrell. <laughs> And then who warns him after it's done? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she's, she's, the whole movie, she's trying to warn Will Ferrell about this guy that blew up the boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> after, wow. after the elves take care of him. <laughs> but that's why I found too, like, okay, so there were silly elements in it. They had elves and ghosts. But to me, <laughs> yes. those seemed the less far-fetched than the way Will Ferrell what was Will Ferrell's character name again? Lars, I believe. Lars, yeah. It was Lars and Sigret, right? Sigret was uh, Rachel McAdams, yeah. yeah. So, But those supernatural elements seemed less far-fetched than their like royally destroying the, their <laughs> Their ineptitude, basically. Yeah, exactly. They, they, great word. <laughs> because you see that they actually have talent. Oh, yeah. They say it throughout the movie that Secret's an amazing singer. That yeah. if she didn't have him, she would win no problem. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, I don't think that she'd win no problem. I don't no, think but they kind of they kind of said it like they basically what they basically said is he was holding her back. Yeah, yeah, and right. It's 
but and what makes me mad is like I hate those kind of movies where it's like one is holding the other back. It's like they really needed to kind of drive it home that he just needed to calm down. And then they kind of did that because when she finally sang her song and he was just mm-hmm. backing her up or adding, he was doing the piano and he's adding a little bit of background vocals and it sounded mm-hmm. good. And I was like, that's, that's good. Like that's teamwork. That's how it should be. Like have, sure. Have her do the lead vocals for that song or whatever, but you know what I mean? Like instead of, I get, I get what you're trying to say, but you're also coming at this at the, from the, the standpoint of the performer too. Mm-hmm. right yeah, 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 just yeah. just based off of your background but this this movie is like it's it's all kinds of ridiculous and it's it's tons of fun and i liked the fact that one scene um <laughs> my roommate and i we went on and we were talking about this one scene where he's sitting at the fountain mm-hmm. and <laughs> the americans come yeah. So he's having this like heart to heart moment, almost like, oh, what would be reminiscent of, um, almost like Simba staring into the water and seeing his reflection, but the reflection yeah. starts talking back to him. Mm-hmm. So he's having this like sort of weird, you know, <laughs> existential spiritual moment, and the Americans come in and they're like, "Hey, bro, is this where they shot Game of Thrones?" You know, I yeah. want to know about GOT, bro. Isn't that in He's just, sorry? Was that in Scotland? Yeah, they were in yeah. Scotland. In like, Game of Thrones was not yeah. shot in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, I don't think, I, if it was, maybe about 10 minutes of it. Anyway, <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm just joking. But anyways, my whole, <laughs> whole thing is, then he proceeds to insult the Americans with the reflection feeding him lines <laughs> to rip into them. <laughs> oh, you know what? I didn't even catch that. I must you have, didn't catch it. I must so, have been so tired. Like, I just didn't you, Again, you're watching it at like 3 a.m. in the morning. and 3 a.m. So, yeah, you, you missed it. <laughs> oh, I had, yeah, I didn't have but any. Yeah, no, the, the, the reflection's feeding him insults to say to the Americans... <laughs> And then he, he he uses he pretty much says the same things just in a nicer tone when he has to jump in their car, right? Yeah. And get a ride to Eurovision with them. One of my favorite lines is, "In Europe, there are no speed limits. You go as fast as you want." And they're like, "Really?" But that's like kind of true, though. Is the thing? <laughs> okay, no, that is slightly true yes and it's only on one highway and that's in germany called the yeah. autobahn yeah yeah the Ger- and yeah. it's unsafe to drive 100 kilometers per hour there on that highway if you think about it if you're going to do that stay on the right hand lane because <laughs> i had a teacher in high school again we're going off on tangents in this episode but i had a teacher in high school that spent a year sabbatical just touring Europe for a bit. And he drove on that. And he said, the scariest thing about that highway is you're driving for however many stretches of kilometers and there's no one. Then all of a sudden you could hear it before you see it. All you hear is, you hear an engine just rumbling. And then next thing you know, if you look to your left, just flies right by you, right? He's like, so you have to be careful if you're going to change lanes or anything like that. You have to be very careful to make sure that nobody is behind you. Hmm. Which, if you think about it, though, European driving etiquette is a lot more, is a lot better than North American driving etiquette. I feel like people, drivers yeah. in North America are kind of jerky. <laughs> uh, so. I, you know what? I think it, it depends. It, it probably just depends where you are. I mean, uh, no, it does. Maybe, but I mean, like, maybe in I've, I've driven, I've driven in Europe and I've driven in, Europe. in Toronto. No, but that's what I'm trying to say. I'm saying North America in general yeah, I, yeah, compared to, yeah. compared to like, say, cause I've, I've driven in Europe compared yeah. to Europe, North American drivers kind of worse. And I lump myself in with that group. Hmm. It's just because of the way we have these just terrible driving habits. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. There's no etiquette. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> anyway, getting, getting back to the movie. Yeah. There are certain, um, there are certain things. Honestly, first of all, I still, Rachel McAdams with her like Princess Leia buns is adorable. <laughs> Let's be honest for a second. You but, paused the movie, uh, didn't you? you uh, no, I didn't compare. Dirty. <laughs> but uh, you know what? So here's a, here's another good thing. Like I, I was listening to someone else talking about this movie, and because I don't know if there was this was supposed to be a straight to Netflix. Or if it was actually supposed to be... Because the way it was shot, I was like, you put a lot of work into this movie. I but, like see, here's the thing, though. Netflix is throwing tons of money at movies now. I mean... Well, so what I was thinking is, I wonder if Will Ferrell should almost do like what Adam Sandler's doing and do like a five-picture deal. Because maybe, I mean, maybe he already has, and this is like the first in the set. Maybe. Like I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But like I this think, was, I think he did. Like um, in terms of Sandler, this Happy Madison sort of little, like uh, thing he's done with Netflix mm-hmm. has allowed him to do relative slop and then come out with uncut gems. But he's also, and he's made a crap load of money. Exactly, but but this is, but again. Uh, again to go on another tangent but this is sandler in a nutshell in terms of his career he'll come out with slop for years and then jump and just drop like an uncut gems or a punch drunk love or something along those lines where you actually can see his talent in terms of acting Mm. at play yeah right i find like here's the thing sandler is funny for whatever reason, for the longest time, I don't know if a lot of his movies have been. I mean, yeah. to be honest, the last Happy Madison movie that came out was The Wrong Missy. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Okay, we, we might have to do that on this show. It's another comedy uh, with David Spade and Lauren Lampkiss. I haven't watched now, any of his like Netflix movies. Okay, th- this is actually one of the better ones. It's funny. Spade was in... And then he had another good one, I think, with uh, Jennifer Aniston. But anyways, again, we're going off topic with Sandler and all that stuff. But, like, those, like, just what I'm saying is this could be the beginning of that for Will Ferrell where we might see more of him doing stuff on Netflix. But Mm -hmm. it's not like Will Ferrell doesn't work. Will Ferrell has stuff coming out all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Um, And, you know, like, Will Ferrell, I don't know if Will Ferrell has the same type of uh, dramatic chops that Adam Sandler does. I know he's done... Uh, the closest drama I think I've seen him in... Stranger Than Fiction? And that's not a drama. It's a dramedy. Yeah, it's still comedy, right? It's just... But again... It's not, it's it's not, like, it's not like a full-on... It's, yeah. it, he hasn't gone the route, the extent that Sandler has gone in terms of mm-hmm. acting and drama. Yeah. Now... Sandler or Jim Carrey or anything like that. Jim Carrey. I, I would even argue, as good as Jim Carrey is, I think Sandler is better. Mm, I don't know. See, is, and here's... I'll say, you, I'll, I'll say why. I mean, and I'm sure Jim Carrey taps into, into it quite a bit but it's also been a while since we've seen Jim Carrey in something yeah right and that's probably just because he's taking a break or doing his own thing which I'm not surprised he's for the longest time he was the highest paid actor in the world (laughs) but like with with Sandler he's dropped quite a few of these dramatic roles to full-on critical acclaim Mm -hmm. right and Again, the Academy being the Academy have snubbed him. I mean, everybody said he should have got the got a nomination for Uncut Gems. Yeah. A lot of people said that. But pretty much somebody who's tight with the Academy said he didn't get it because he's a comedic actor. But then again, literally, Jim. same thing happened with Jim Carrey, though. I mean, he won yeah. the- oh, yeah. for dramatic actor. That's the thing. I mean, but I guess... The, the truth is, is that with Sandler's, it's a little bit more fresh in the memory. That's probably it. Because Jim Carrey is taking a, a, like, a back seat. 
he hasn't done anything he's like aware. of his own he's and he's doing it on his own will basically it's not like he's not getting hired he's just he's probably not doing anything so he doesn't want to do anything he, he's he's doing like his paintings and he's he's that's it you know yeah i mean uh, so as far as i guess uh, yeah i wouldn't see will ferrell though as this dramatic actor i haven't really seen him do anything that's drama it. wise right so, but i, I think, mean i think that will ferrell um it's not that he doesn't have the ability because he definitely does um but he's i think he, he will ferrell has always had this kind of like charm to him yeah oh you yeah know, there's a little bit there's something endearing in the way he presents his characters even mm-hmm. when there's something like a ron burgundy where he's very um <laughs> egotistical and overconfident narcissistic and, and narciss- all that fun stuff there's, still some, there's still something really charming about that or when he's like that character in stranger than fiction or um old school like when he's frank the tank you know, like he's got, <laughs> these, he's got these uh, that ability, there, yeah, there's, yeah, there's quality to to draw you to him, to to endear you to the character, yeah, to root for yeah. him. Character. Like you want him to succeed. That's, that's yes. That's oh, a, totally. Yeah, I see that. That's yeah, that's another thing that resonates in this movie because you don't want him to fail. I no, think. you want Lars to you know win Eurovision and end up having a good relationship with his father who was played by Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and he's kind of there. And did you catch the running joke that uh, Pierce Brosnan's character pretty much <laughs> fathered half the kids in that town, which yeah. is why he would say that maybe secret is his sister. He's not yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was only because she, her mom always said no yeah <laughs> but so, so that's the thing like so getting into almost some of the other actors like pierce brosnan uh was i feel like he didn't phone it in i feel like he didn't just do it for the paycheck he could have but he was enjoyable it was uh, it was a small enough part that he could have done it and gotten away with it yeah but it seemed like he was yeah. having fun with it um and then again so this is i i gotta give kudos to will ferrell because you can have some of those actors make those movies that's really just about them. And mm-hmm. every other person, except for maybe the love interest, is sidelined. But there were significant stretches where it was about, um, you know, they they throw it back to Iceland. Then it would be uh, Sigret and, oh man, what was the Russian guy's name? Dan Stevens. I don't know. But I don't know, but the, the like, Russian there'd dude. Be, there'd be stretches where he's not in it because he he's letting the other characters take focus, and you gotta get. I give him credit for that because he still is allowing other people to showcase their talents. Mm-hmm. And um, we are that song along. That was wicked. The song along when they all sang in the in the mansion or what was it called? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The sing along, the whole thing. Uh. Yeah, that where they sang that, that mashup, you know, they're singing Black Eyed Peas and Madonna. That wild mashup, that was crazy. That was that was awesome. <laughs> that was actually a lot of fun and like, well, and see, so what I liked about I almost want more movies to do that. <laughs> but see, what I liked about that because I mean, you know, hey, I I admit I watched like I watched all of Glee. You did. Was on, I did you? only only because I really enjoyed the first half of the first season. Mm-hmm did watch all of Glee. I'm but, amazed at your resolve. I, I loved the first half. Of and the your first commitment. Because Jane Lynch was great. And then there was, uh, I love the way they interpreted certain songs. But then it just, then I, and I, after that, I kind of just followed it just to finish it. And then I was like, I can't believe this show. Yeah, is yeah. Off. It's still <laughs> you, on. I'm still you should on. have given up when you when you had the chance. But, um, <laughs> so, so the thing is, when you're watching it, though, uh, this movie, I mean, um, that whole yeah, song, this movie, that, that song along, whatever it was, it was so great because I know they had actual Eurovision contestants in there. Though, that's yes. So oh yeah. Cool. Even the even the 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 chick with the beard. That was a guy. Well, or was you know what? I don't know. It's a trans woman, but yes. Yeah, sure. So, um, 
chick the, with the beard. Sure. Oh dear. <laughs> but what I mean is, you had all you had all those contestants, but everyone was a great singer. But then again, so here's the thing: you're in this uh, this situation, right? You had the Greek girl going after uh, Lars. Mm-hmm. Was she was Greek, right? Yeah, she was yeah. from she was from Greece. Yeah, she's going after the Lars. character, anyways. And then yeah. Then you have the Russian guy going after Secret. Secret. And then they, but they do this huge sing along. And that would normally would be a point where they would point at like the main character and he would have failed. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, know, but he 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 nails it too and everybody sort of fits in and it's like yeah, and okay, they belong like, they belong here. But that was it. I was like, okay, yeah. you can clearly I mean obviously Seagret was the standout way more than him, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you can clearly hold your own with these people and then you royally screw up on stage. That's why I was like, no, like, come on. How, why do you keep failing? Yeah. Like horribly failing, not just a little bit. Like for a certain, I think, <laughs> like, I think it's more for the, the, the for this, the spectacle and to justify Graham paying for Graham Norton to be in this movie <laughs> right. Graham Norton, that's to have one. to have to have Graham Norton's commentary because like realistically I don't think you really needed Graham Norton in this movie he's an extra little plus yeah but yeah <laughs> um, um do you have any other uh points you want to like drop on or no I don't think so I think uh, you know what I yeah, I think I've touched on everything. I was all right. So was, that means I was impressed. As, uh, yeah, strangely enough. So that means we've come to the point in the program where we actually rate this movie out of five ginger snaps. And Josh, how many ginger snaps do you give Eurovision, the story of Fire Saga? I Which, by the it, way, is a sweet name. It is. <laughs> it is an amazing band. Yeah, Fire name. Saga. What was the movie they kept? Or the song they kept wanting them to sing? Yo something? <laughs> yo, yo jingle dingle or something like that. <laughs> the that guy that, the, the guy that got so mad when they yeah. didn't play it. Yeah. He was like, and then he they were outside and they the, apparently their set was done. He's like, come back in and play the fucking song. <laughs> yeah. Was it uh yeah. That was a cute song, though. I admit that. I get why they like it in that small town. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> um, but no, so, okay. So I, get, I would give it a three and a half. I enjoyed it. Maybe because I was more impressed than anything. I thought I was not going to like it at all. But, yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. But performances were, were good. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I would probably rewatch this. It was fun. I felt. Oh, good. it has it has its rewatchability. I think this is going to be one of those, like Anchorman, where it's not super strong at first, but then you know the more you watch it, oh. and the more you get to watch it. In Anchorman, movies. I watched four times in the theaters. You're one of the few, though. No, so many people. Dude, I, I what I'm telling you is it, it's gonna get or, or maybe not Anchorman, but maybe okay, more like an Austin Powers. Where it will start off weak, and then years later, it'll have almost like a cult status. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that's going to happen with this movie. Yeah, Especially with, with, with Eurovision crowd, because I'm sure that's going to get a lot of interest in it. So, I mean, th- this movie is a lot of fun. It's very funny. I'm going to give it, uh, you know what, we're going to tie it. I'm going to do another, I'm going to give it a, a three and a half myself. I mean, it's just as fun. It's by no means, you know, a perfect movie. Mm-hmm. right but it has a lot of rewatchability i mean it's when we can hang out together and get together in groups it this is one of those movies you watch in a group like anchorman yeah. uh quotability not as much as anchorman but but it, it there are very few it. movies there are very few movies that are no and apparently anchorman it, you know some people say anchorman is the most quoted movie of all time or has the most it, it is the most quotable like it, it, it it's become like Angerman comments have come into the uh, most people's normal lexicon if you think about it yeah i mean hell i find like when someone says we're something ridiculous i find like you know doing my ron burgundy impression saying well that doesn't even make sense 
Yeah. Or be you know I mean? <laughs> I'm in a glass case of emotion, of emotion or whatever. Like <laughs> you've called <laughs> me saying this. <laughs> and we, the worst thing is I didn't ask you what was wrong. I just went right into the bit with you. <laughs> what what did the bad man do, Ron? <laughs> and well, uh admittedly I am a scotch drinker too, so I, I will say I love scotch. Mm -hmm. Scotchy scotch. You're probably drinking it right now, aren't you? I'm drinking coffee. No, no scotch right now. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, for Ginger Flicks, I'm Joey. And I'm Josh. And thanks for listening.